The Netherlands is smaller than West Virginia. It's also one of the most densely populated countries on Earth, packed with cities, roads, and over 18 million people living on 41,000 square kilometers of land. That's about 500 people per square kilometer. You'd think they'd be struggling to grow enough food just to feed themselves, but instead, they're feeding much of the world. This tiny patch of land has somehow become the second largest exporter of agricultural products on the planet, just behind the United States, a country 270 times its size. In fact, the Netherlands exported over $140 billion worth of agricultural products in 2024, reaching more than 150 countries worldwide. Dutch farms are producing twice as much food using half as many resources, and they're doing it with less land, less water, and fewer chemicals than almost anywhere else. So, how is that even possible? How can a country with so little space grow so much food? The story of Dutch farming starts with a problem, and it's a big one. The Netherlands doesn't have much land. Only about 18% of the country is actually suitable for growing crops. In fact, much of the country literally sits below sea level. And yet, despite these limits, the Netherlands is the second largest agricultural goods exporter in the world. That includes vegetables, dairy, meat, flowers, and seeds, sent to over 150 countries every single year. But this didn't happen by chance. After World War II, the Dutch faced a serious food crisis. The winter of 1944 and 45, known as the Hunger Winter, left thousands of people starving. Farms had been destroyed, food was scarce, and the country was still reeling from the famine that killed over 20,000 people. And that moment changed everything. The Dutch government made a promise. Hunger would never again threaten the nation. But turning that promise into reality was not simple. The Netherlands had limited land and a growing population. If they wanted food security, they needed a plan. And fast. That plan came from Agriculture Minister Siko Mansholt, who pushed for radical modernization. Over the next few decades, Dutch farms transformed. Out went small, traditional farms. In came machines, chemical fertilizers, and large-scale production. Farms got bigger, more specialized, and more productive. By the 1960s, the country was not only self-sufficient, it was producing a surplus. Dutch dairy, fruits, and vegetables began flowing across Europe, and when they ran out of land, they made more. The Dutch expanded their territory through massive land reclamation projects, draining sections of the sea and turning them into fertile farmland. Flevoland, for example, didn't even exist before the 1950s. Today, it's one of the country's key agricultural regions, created by reclaiming over 1,000 square kilometers of land from water. But high productivity came with a cost. By the 1990s, it was clear that intensive farming was taking a toll on the environment, on biodiversity, and on water quality. So the country pivoted again. This time, the goal was not just to grow more, it was to grow smarter. In the early 2000s, the Netherlands adopted a new vision, produce twice as much food using half as many resources. That single idea, efficiency over expansion, set off a wave of innovation that would push Dutch farming to the global forefront. And that brings us to what's happening today. Today, farming in the Netherlands doesn't look like what most people imagine. Forget wide open fields and tractors under the sun. This is farming on a whole different level. Let's start with the greenhouses. In the Westland region alone, there's a vast stretch of land that looks like a city made entirely of glass. That's because nearly 24,000 acres of the Netherlands are covered in greenhouses. To put that in perspective, it's nearly twice the size of Manhattan. Dedicated entirely to growing food. But these are not your typical greenhouses. Inside, everything is controlled. Temperature, humidity, light. Many of them use hydroponics, where plants grow in nutrient-rich water instead of soil. This method uses up to 90% less water than traditional farming. And the yields are massive. One acre under glass here can produce as much food as 10 acres in an open field. And when land is limited, they don't just grow outward, they grow upward. Dutch companies are now stacking crops indoors in vertical farms. These setups use LED lighting, precise climate control, and zero sunlight. For example, there's an indoor farm near Amsterdam that can feed around 100,000 people using an area no bigger than two football fields. Everything is grown in layers, and it's all designed to maximize space and minimize waste. These farms are often located right next to cities which means fresher food and less need for transportation. But it doesn't stop there. Out in the fields, Dutch farmers use drones, satellite maps, and soil sensors to monitor their crops down to the square meter. They know exactly where water, fertilizer, or pest control is needed, and just as importantly, where it isn't. This is called precision agriculture, and it's how farmers here are able to use fewer resources while getting more from every acre. 
Water, of course, is a major concern everywhere, but especially in the Netherlands. Much of the country is below sea level, so water management is second nature here. Dutch farms collect rainwater in underground tanks, recycle water in greenhouses, and use drip irrigation in the fields to make sure every drop goes directly to the roots. Just to give you a sense of scale, Dutch farmers can grow a pound of tomatoes using only half a gallon of water. In most parts of the world, that same pound of tomatoes would need about 28 gallons. That's not just efficient, it's critical in a world where 70% of freshwater withdrawal go to agriculture. And it's not just the way they grow food, it's also what they grow it with. In Northern Netherlands, there's an area called Seed Valley. This is where Dutch companies develop new types of seeds that grow faster, produce more, and resist disease. About one-third of all the vegetable seeds traded globally come from the Netherlands, and they're designed for efficiency. Better seeds mean better yields, no matter where the farm is. Now, all of this innovation didn't just happen randomly. There's an entire ecosystem in the Netherlands that's built to support efficient, high-tech farming, from world-class universities to family-run farms that look more like science labs than anything else. At the center of it all is Wageningen University and Research, ranked number one globally in agricultural sciences. Think of it as the Silicon Valley of farming. Scientists, engineers, and students here work directly with farmers and companies to solve real-world problems. They're not just doing research for the sake of research. They're developing new crop varieties, improving greenhouse systems, and testing sustainable farming methods that actually get used on farms across the country, and in many cases, around the world. A lot of the technology we've already talked about, like precision farming, LED lighting for greenhouses, and advanced water recycling, either started at Wageningen or was perfected through their work with private companies. It's part of what makes Dutch agriculture so efficient. There's constant collaboration between the people developing new ideas and the people putting them into practice. One great example of this in action is Coppert Cress, a company based in the Westland. They specialize in growing microgreens and edible flowers, but what's interesting is how they they do it. Inside their greenhouses, they use LED lights and precise climate control, not just to grow more food, but to grow plants that are more flavorful, more nutritious, and more consistent. Chefs around the world love their products, but behind the scenes, what they're really showing is how technology can improve both quality and quantity. Another example is Duivestein Tomatoes, a family-run farm that's often described as one of the most advanced in the world. Their greenhouse complex covers about 36 acres, and it runs on geothermal energy. They drill deep underground to tap into natural heat, which warms the greenhouses without relying on fossil fuels. They also collect rainwater for irrigation, and instead of spraying chemicals, they use natural predators like beneficial insects to manage pests. Even the growing medium is sustainable. They grow their tomatoes in rock wool instead of soil, which which allows them to control nutrients and reduce waste. And the result? More than 17 million pounds of tomatoes are produced each year. And this is not just a one-off success. Across the country, there are hundreds of farms using similar methods. Some use robots to milk cows, others run greenhouses entirely on solar power. Companies like Lili are designing farm equipment that practically runs itself, while firms like Enza Zaden and Rik Zwan are developing seeds that grow faster and require fewer inputs. Even large multinational food companies have taken notice. Many of the world's biggest agri-food businesses have set up research centers in the Netherlands, drawn by the country's deep knowledge and constant innovation. So, when people say the Netherlands farms more food with less land than anyone else, it's not just because of one farmer or one company, it's because the entire system, from universities to greenhouses to seed labs, is focused on solving the same challenge, how to grow more with less. What really sets Dutch farming apart is how every square meter of land is used to its full potential. The Netherlands is not just producing a lot of food, it's producing more food per acre than almost anywhere else in the world. Let's take potatoes as an example. On a typical farm around the world, you might get 9 or 10 tons of potatoes per acre. But Dutch farmers, they can pull in over 20 tons per acre. That's more than double on the same piece of land. And that's not just luck or good weather. It's the result of precision tools, smarter seeds, and better land management. Now look at greenhouses. In open fields, lettuce grows once per season, maybe twice. In a Dutch greenhouse, they can grow lettuce year-round. And because it's all controlled, the same acre of greenhouse can produce the same amount of lettuce as 10 acres of farmland. And there's no off-season here. With artificial lighting and temperature control, crops can grow 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. No pauses, no waiting for spring, no worrying about a sudden frost. That's why in some regions, like Westland, about 80% of all agricultural land is under glass. It's a strategy that turns small areas into high-output zones.
But it's not just about growing more, it's also about where and how they grow. In the Netherlands, farming is mapped out almost like a city plan. Some areas specialize in open field crops like potatoes and onions, others focus on greenhouse vegetables or flowers. There's even rooftop farming in cities, greenhouses built on top of buildings to produce food closer to where people live. And the planning goes beyond just location. Farmers often rotate crops through the year or grow multiple crops side by side to get the most out of each growing cycle. Every inch of usable land is calculated, optimized, and put to work. Of course, producing this much food on limited land doesn't come without challenges. For decades, the Netherlands focused heavily on maximizing output, and while that worked, it also created some serious environmental pressure. Take nitrogen, for example. Dutch farms, especially livestock farms, produce a lot of it, mostly from manure and fertilizer, and when there's too much nitrogen in the soil and water, it causes problems. It pollutes waterways, damages natural habitats, and contributes to air pollution. By the 2010s, this became a national issue. The Dutch government set a goal to cut nitrogen emissions in half by 2030, and that's led to big debates and protests, especially from farmers who are being asked to scale back. But at the same time, Dutch agriculture has been pushing hard to use fewer resources and waste less. And on livestock farms, antibiotics, which used to be used widely, have been reduced by over 60% in the past decade. That helps fight the global problem of antibiotic resistance. There's also a shift toward what the Dutch call circular farming. That means closing the loop, using waste from one part of the system as input for another. For example, some tomato farms use CO2 captured from nearby factories to boost plant growth in greenhouses. Others turn manure into biogas to power equipment or heat buildings. It's all about making the most of what's already there. And it's not just about technology. There's also a growing effort to bring back biodiversity on farms, planting wildflowers, creating habitats for pollinators, and setting aside land for nature. These steps don't boost yield, but they help keep the environment in balance. So, while the Netherlands has built one of the most efficient farming systems in the world, it's now working just as hard to make sure that system doesn't come at the expense of the environment. The focus now is on smarter farming, not just more farming. So, what does all of this mean for the rest of the world? By 2050, global food demand could rise 50 to 60 percent, while arable land per person shrinks. We need new ways to grow more with less. The Netherlands shows that small countries can become agricultural powerhouses through planning and technology. And it's not just about exporting food. The Netherlands also exports knowledge. Dutch universities and companies work with farmers all over the world. They are involved in 140-plus countries, helping local farmers adapt Dutch innovations to their own climates and challenges. Some of these ideas are already spreading. Countries like Singapore and the UAE have already built Dutch-designed greenhouses, with Singapore's indoor farms producing over 1,000 tons annually on 8,000 square meters. Others are adopting precision tools to manage water and fertilizer more effectively. Of course, not every country can recreate the Dutch model exactly. Not every place has the same infrastructure, climate, or funding, but the principles still apply. Focus on efficiency, invest in research, and use data to make better farming decisions. In a world where land and water are increasingly scarce, that's a message worth paying attention to. So what do you think? Could vertical farms, precision tools, and smarter seeds help solve the food challenges where you live? And which of these innovations do you think could or should be used more widely? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next one.